Hello everyone, my name is Cecilia and welcome to this Next Gen Career Expert Talk, uh, where we will be talking to our very own career coach, uh, Neil Finney, who has done a journey of career exploration throughout his life, which has led him up to helping others today in their careers. So today we will be getting to know Neil a little bit and hear more about the EX3 framework, which is a career design methodology that he has developed together with the Next Gen Careers team. But before I introduce Neil, I just wanted to give you guys an overview of Next Gen Careers and what it is that we do. Next Gen Careers is all about uh, finding success in the future world of work. And our mission is to support individuals uh, to find su success in the future world of work. So we run, we do this by running online and on-site uh, skills development programs and career design programs. And uh, we provide free resources as well uh, for students and for educators and whoever, whoever finds them useful uh, about the um, future world of work in different industries such as sciences, uh, computing and engineering, social impact, uh, etc. And we also run these weekly expert talks where I usually talk to professionals from the real world so that we can provide, spread the knowledge about these fields and what's going on in these fields so, so that people can better prepare for what's out there. But today we will be talking to Neil and Neil has many years of career exploration under his belt and has started businesses all over the world. Um, but now it's based in the UK and um, and here to share his experiences with us today. So I'm just gonna say welcome Neil to your expert talk. Yeah, I guess, thanks Thanks for having me. Is that <laughs> the right thing to say? Even though I spoke to you, I don't know, an hour ago? Yeah. Yeah, no, it's good to be here. And it's, it's strange being on this side because I'm normally interviewing other people. So uh, <laughs> nervous. <laughs> Um, yeah, by the way, Neil is one of the co-founders of Next Gen Careers, um, for those of you who don't know him since before, but I guess we're a mixed uh, amount of people here. Some know Neil since before, some don't know him, so I thought that we'd just start with an introduction. If you can introduce yourself, Neil, and explain a little bit about your career exploration journey and what it is that you do today. Yeah, like how, how long do I have? Like it's, it, it, it can be pretty long if, if I go kind of right back. And interestingly enough, I've just finished on a meeting and speaking to someone in, in the real estate, the, the kind of tech real estate business. And we spent the whole hour just talking about our backgrounds in our careers because they're, they're pretty diverse. So it, I think mine is hugely different in regards to the, the career path that I've taken in terms of the industries I've worked in. I left school at 17 because I didn't really know what to do. And university at that time wasn't something that I was even thinking about. And I literally needed to get a job. So I first went into construction, uh, basically digging holes, pouring concrete. I quickly found out that I didn't like doing that too much. It's quite strenuous work. So I was able to, to kind of create a small recruitment business within construction. Um, but then at the age of 19, decided I wanted to get out of my hometown, as many young people do, moved to the French Alps, had a lot of fun in the French Alps between uh, France and New Zealand, actually, uh, and spotted an opportunity from my time in New Zealand, which was, you know, the, the, the kind of backpacker trail. And I took that back to France, of which at the time that the ski industry was unheard of. And EasyJet, you know, the easy cost airlines, uh, launched at that time. So I set up a backpackers. Uh, the backpackers work to some extent. There's a story behind that I'm not going to go into now. I then moved to Latin America, got involved with social community initiatives. Again, a very serendipity moment of being in Guatemala, being asked to be Father Christmas at 26. Um, that introduced me to the world of, of kind of that profit wasn't everything. And there was also ways to give back. I then moved to Japan, uh, where I had an English school in Japan, moved back to the UK, setting up uh, organizations in CSR, launched an internship business, came to Exeter, uh, developed with Andrew Corkscrew, which is all about thinking outside the box, then launched a, the co space, which I'm sitting in now. So I have a co space in, in Exeter. But uh, alongside all these, these businesses I've launched, I've also worked part-time jobs and full-time short-term jobs from you know, clearing drains out, sewage works, you know, to potato picking, to waiting at a Japanese restaurant, to bar work, you know, you, you name it. I've probably done it. I've worked on a sheep farm in New Zealand, docking lambs tails, you know, I, my, the amount of postman. I've been a postman. I was a postman for three months, hated it 
because you have to get up at like half four in the morning on a Saturday morning. I would see people coming from the nightclub that I was at two hours before. And I was like, this is postman is not for me, not my kind of job. So yeah, pretty diverse, like really diverse my background. It really is. And I get, I've heard your story a couple of times, but I get like, every time I get uh, equally inspired. Um, so thank you for sharing your, your journey with us. And you've done so many things and traveled and, and done so many different jobs. How has your own experience helped you uh, in to support others in their career exploration? I, I, realistically, I think it's the diversity. Yeah. I yeah. think because my background is so diverse, that I, I kind of can empathize mm. with so many different people going on different career explorations. You know, I can, I, I, if someone's done something, I've probably had some experience. I've never been a doctor. I've never had any, so that I struggle with sometimes, but I've had some understanding just through the, the diverse own experiences I've had in, in, in my career journey. Um, and I think also it's hopefully I've got this positivity about careers. I love careers. It's the thing that we do for the majority of our life apart from sleeping. Yeah. So I get so excited about going on people's journeys and working with them on their journeys in their career that I feel that I have a lot to bring because mm. I can see the positivity in everything that they do, even the bad stuff that happens. Mm. Um, so I think that really helps me in terms of letting people understand that that kind of pathway and I, I think I'm also super fortunate in launching the co-work space yeah that I speak to so many different people from different industries on a daily basis yeah. you know so I hear things that are going on from different industries from translation to architecture mm. to tech mm. to you know I'm looking over here we've got city science I'm looking over there we've got you know Darren at creative stripe we've got you know move gb tech developers so, you know, I think I'm really fortunate as well that I'm plugged in to so many, so many different things. And, and also I'm, I'm a big believer, I get this from my mum, I love to talk, but I also love to listen. So anyone I meet, I'm, I'm taking information from them. So if you ever sit next to me on a flight, you know, COVID is not what you have to worry about. You have to worry about me asking you so many questions that you won't be able to sleep. So I think, you know, it's it's that that real thirst for knowledge from people like I don't read books you know I don't I listen to podcasts but I get all my knowledge secondhand from other people I let them read the stuff I let them take it all in and I take the best bits from them but because I have that I think you know it really helps in terms of helping people to to navigate careers because I can always say oh, I, I spoke to Michael who's in property tech if you're interested in real estate I know the perfect person for you to speak to so I think you know that interest in people really allows you to help people navigate their careers. Yeah, and this is something that we talk about a lot at Next Gen Careers and how networking is the, the way to bring you forward. And for anyone like students as well as professionals, I recommend you to like go to a co-working space, spend like a day, a week and invest in that because you're going to meet so many cool people. Um, so yeah, that's a really good. Uh, so if anyone's in XRO, I'll give a discount. <laughs> I'll, I'll discount times in, in, in the co-work space here because it's, it's a great community. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, let's dive into the EX3 career design framework uh, that we are here all to hear about today. So what did the, before we explain what it is exactly, but what, where did the idea come from uh, initially? I think it, like you'll you'll know, and the rest of the team will know at Next Gen from our time, say with Corks Group, we we love creating original content, and I, I say original with a bit of a wry smile because I don't believe there's any ever true innovation. As you said, like I love magpies. For those people that don't know what magpies are, they're black and white birds, and they look for silvery, shiny things, and they take them. And I'm not saying we steal people's things, but you know, at, at Cool Screw Next Gen. We have a real ability to be able to magpie great things that are out there, great mindsets, great products, great services, but we can add our own secret source to it. And I think that's what we do with a lot of our, our, our products. You know, we see what's out there and we see what works and we're able to create our own kind of special structures, yeah. frameworks yeah. that we know works for, for the people that we're dealing with. So when we look at EX3 framework, there'll be a lot of similarities. Yeah. 
yeah. from other things that you can see out there, different career compasses, different frameworks. But for us, it was always about, you know, building something around next gen careers, around that brand that we believe in. And right at the beginning, when we launched the, the organization, it was all about those kind of three magical E's of, you know, examining self, you know, exploring and then getting the relevant experiences. And we've worked in experiences for the last 10 years. So when we found those three things, we really built out our framework around it because we know it works. You know, we've got tangible anecdotal proof that going through this process works. So I don't think we ever really sat down and thought of let's come up with a framework. I think the framework was already there. Yeah. You know, it was already what we were doing. All we wanted to do was put a name to it, put a bit more of a structure behind it that would allow other people to be able to understand it and go through it. Because I think sometimes when you're in it, it seems very, very obvious. Of course, this is what you do. Of yeah. course, this is how you approach your career. But when you start scratching under the surface in terms of not just students, but also people within their professional life, mm -hmm. they're pretty lost. They don't know how to start really developing their careers and designing their careers. So creating something that is very simple for them in a tried and tested method, you know, makes a lot of sense. And I think that's the way that we really framed it. We took our experience, we took what we were doing, and we created a framework from that. So I don't think we ever sat down and thought, let's architecture some sort of career design. All we've done is we've taken what we've been doing for the last decade and put it into a framework that other people can follow and other people can utilize. Amazing. And what, do, I think this is like the, the million dollar question. What does it look like? Um, if you can give yeah, so I, 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 I kind of alluded to the, the three key components that make yeah. up the EX3 framework. Examine, explore, experience. Do those three things and do them on a regular basis. This is kind of a, a loop philosophy that you're always doing it you'll find career success, mm. you know, and if we, if we drill down into that, if we make it more granular, you know, what do we mean by examine? It's understanding who you are. And I think when you look at the statistics that are out there, you look at the statistics that are out there in regards to the unhappiness that the world has in their careers which if you believe the stats is about 80% of the world's working population don't enjoy their jobs, have no fulfillment. When you really drill down into that, what you start understanding is, is because they don't value the company they're working for. It's not matched to who they are. It's not matched to what they believe in. You know, and we, we often talk about Ikigai, and you know I've got uh, a, a strange feeling about it. I think we've westernized the term quite a lot, but it goes down to that, you know, find your reason for being, but you can only really do that if you understand who you are and you have to spend time examining who you are and who you are changes. Me as a 45 year old is very different to Neil as a 25 year old. So, you know, you're always examining and you're getting into the habit of really understanding who you are and what drives you. So the examine part is the key component. It's really looking at self, understanding your values, you know, what you stand for, you know, also your work motives, you know, understanding what, what makes you happy in your work. And I think what we're understanding through the pandemic is nobody enjoys being in the office. Everyone wants to be at home. You know, that's what's making people happy at the moment. You know, whether or not that's going to be the same in 12 months time, that's a different question. Luckily enough, co-work space is still busy. People still want to come in here. Not so good for 12 months in a pandemic, getting better. Um, but it's also then understanding, you know, what do you want out from life? Do you, do you want a job that consumes every hour or do you want a job that gives you more flexibility? You know, I chose the path of entrepreneurship and startup because I wanted to make my own decisions. I falsely and, and probably wrongly thought it would give me more time. Doesn't takes away all of my time. Um, but it's, it's finding that balance, you know, it's finding the balance and what you want and what you stand for. And once you have that foundation, you have that grounding, you know, and it, it's hard to do at the beginning, but you get better at it. You keep reassessing what's important. And I've done it this year, you know, January and February, I sat down, you know, with my wife and we went through what's important to me. You know, what became apparent is, yes, I can work a lot for the next kind of six months, but I do want more free time. I want time to work on passion projects. I want more time to go surfing, which means I maybe have to give up some of the businesses that I'm working on because I just won't have capacity to do it. So I think, you know, that examine part is, is critical to make sure you're making the right decisions 
in regards to your, your next career step. And that leads on to the next thing. Once you know who you are, it's all about that exploration stage. And this is, this is, again, critical. This is something that we don't do enough. You know, when we, 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 we work, and I, I think when I was at school, you know, career counsellors were very different to the career counsellors we have now. You know, fill in this form. It used to be that sheet you would mark the boxes and it would go in a computer and it would come out and it told me I should be a bingo caller and an accountant. What great advice that was. Amazing. So I think, I think you know, we're getting better at it. But I think that the, the problem that we have is we can put a lot of pressure on career advisors. And if you're, if you're in education for a long time and you're a career counsellor for a long time, it can be very easy or actually very difficult to keep abreast of everything that's changing, everything that's going on in terms of the working world. Um, but being able to give that breadth of advice and exploration is really hard. So we have to be more creative in terms of how we're exploring careers. For me, as you know, I just talk to everyone. I, I ask everyone what they do. What's your background? What are you working on? What do you work? How do you get into that? What are you doing next? I'm always asking. If you're uncomfortable with that, you can do desk research. There's great resources that you can find online. You know, we have them at NextGen in terms of you know, each week we speak to a career expert from different careers. Watch all of them. You know, don't pigeonhole yourself thinking I'm going to be a lawyer because you may never have heard of a UX designer or a drone engineer or an esports team manager. So you have to be open to possibilities and not just blink yourself to one thing. Yes, you might become a lawyer, but only become a lawyer if you really understand what else is out there. And the exploration part, again, is, is, is a difficult one because it, it takes a certain amount of, I, I, I guess... Not, not commitment, courage. Courage is the word because you've got to go into spaces and you've got to put yourself in difficult positions, whether it's to talk to someone, someone else, to join you know, a meetup group, meetup.com, great place to, to explore different, different kind of areas and careers. But just like coming into a co-work space for the first time, you know, I'm so surprised. We, we are based in Exeter. We have one of the biggest universities in the UK. Yeah. I'm constantly telling the students that I meet there and the, the, the lecturers and the professors, the co-work space, get them to drop in, get them to explore some of the people that we have down here, get them to come to some of our events. We might get one student, two students a year dropping by. And the reason for that is because we're not built to put ourselves in these difficult situations. You've got to be willing to push yourself outside your comfort zone. You know, this is why, you know, I'm, I'm a big believer in things like getting people to travel, get people to leave their hometowns, get people to kind of really open doors, because that's when you really start exploring. You know, it will be on a bus to some far off place with the person you're sitting beside that you are introduced to a career that you never imagined you would have. Would I have imagined I'd be sitting here talking about giving career advice, having a co-work space, a innovation-based business, a dog-based business, investing in a UX design business and now launching a, you know, a, a, a business focused on events. No, no idea. You know, but the people I've met, I can tell you for every single individual person I've met how they've put me where I am now. So, you know, that exploration part is key and it's not to be blinkered. Um, it's really to have the courage to, to really go out and, and, and do different things. And I said, nowadays, there's so many resources that you can join. Go onto Discord, go onto YouTube, go onto LinkedIn, meet with people, connect with people, open doors, explore, 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 and don't focus on one particular area. And the great thing about that exploration, it leads on then to that next part, that final part of that kind of career framework is the experience part. And this is what we hear all the time. And it's like, oh, I've got no experience and, you know, uh, I can't get a job because I don't have the experience. People take experience in the wrong way. And also they, they feel experience only comes if it's a, a huge amount of time. You know, it, it, you, experience, I have to have done something for two years to, to be really experienced in something. We're so lucky now in terms of the future of work. People are no longer necessarily looking for that 10 years of experience because that 10 years of experience doesn't count for toffee because most of those industries have been blown away by the pandemic. So we have to think differently. It's a really exciting time to be in at the moment because potentially that 10 years of experience that someone had over you counts for nothing. So more than ever, and we were talking about this 10 years ago, you know this, you know, what employers are looking for, what companies are looking for is they're looking for those kind of dynamic skills, 
those meta skills of, you know, uh, that are transferable, whether it's communication, team working, resilience, stress tolerance, adaptability, problem solving, that doesn't have to come from 10 years within an industry. That can come from an experience you've had traveling. You know, when I traveled to meet my, my girlfriend at the time in New Zealand and she'd gone to New Zealand a week before me, she was meant to meet me at the airport. I was like 19. I landed in, in um, Christchurch. I was expecting her to be there. I'd flown for 24 hours. I get out of the arrivals kind of lounge. She's not there. As I'm flying, she's decided to dump me in New Zealand and not tell me, you know, I have to be resilient. I turned up, I had a bit of paper with an address on where I was meant to be staying. I turn up at this address in Christchurch. I knock on the door, the door opens, this guy answers. I'm, I'm Merylita's boyfriend. Who's Merylita? Oh no, Merylita's not here. I'm, I'm her boyfriend. Merylita doesn't have a boyfriend. I'm, I'm her boyfriend. You know, so that experience taught me so much. You know, it taught me communication because I had to convince this guy I was Merylita's boyfriend. I think he saw the tears in my eyes, took me in. I was able to then build a good relationship with him. I stayed with him for two weeks. One of my best mates, you know, Merylita and I, funny story. I met her a few years later. Funny, funny. Anyway, that's another story. Um, but these experiences are just as valuable. You know, and if you can anecdotally talk about these two companies, to people you want to work for. And I, I haven't said interviews yet, because again, what we do with, with NextGen is we don't really promote the idea of interviews. We want own opportunities created, but it gives you anecdotal proof and you can get it. There's a, there's a really interesting organization, uh, the Game Academy, the, or Game Academy, I'm, I'm sure we'll share the link, Cissé, is you, you are shown how to use your experience from gaming to transfer into the workplace. So even now when we're gaming, we can use that experience and we can show how we can transfer that into the workplace. You know, and if you want more project work, you want more career-based professional work, you don't have to take a year-long internship. You know, there's people like um, uh, Jerry Parker. I'm probably pronouncing, I'm probably going the other way around. It's probably yeah. Jerry Parker. Jerry Parker. Um, that offer micro internships. These are short-term internships that are, are like allow you to get experience very, very quickly, and they're paid. These kind of organizations are springing up that allow you to get really short, kind of uh, sprint-based experiential experience within a career very quickly. And there's two reasons that's a benefit with the experience side. Number one is you can test your hypothesis if you like that industry or not. You know, why are you going to study six years at medical school if you haven't even experienced it, you haven't even job shadowed someone because you get in and then you figure out, actually, it's not for me. It's like, what? That's a lot of time to commit to doing something that you're not 100% about. So these micro internships, these micro experiences allow you to test, but they also allow you to bring out kind of that anecdotal proof. You know, and again, we do it on, on our kind of micro projects that we have, you know, the experience chips. It's all about short term sprints in work. And that's the key element. But experiences come from, from many different areas. And it's really important that you, you kind of build those, those components and you build those experiences because it's going to allow you to make more informed decisions on those kind of next steps. And I, I touched on it a little bit. I said, you know, at next gen, we don't really talk about interviews. And this goes into the exploration stage as well. When we're exploring, it's also about creating your own opportunities. You know, it's about creating your own opportunities that are not based on you finding a job online. So the statistic behind that is 80% of jobs are never posted publicly. 80% of jobs are never advertised. You know, so by only applying for those that you can find online, you're missing the majority of jobs that are out there. So when you're exploring, you're building connections. You're, you're unlocking doors for potential opportunities. And again, these are explorations that you're doing with these individuals that you're meeting there's a chance for you to do these, these short-term experiences for them, show what you can do, these minimal viable projects that you can do that can show them what you can do, which can then lead to a full-time job with the organization. And the key thing is that you've explored companies that match your values and match your goals. And that is critical. You know, that exploration part that you're making the right decisions for the experiences you're going to take. On these experiences, it's obviously important that you're very much reflecting on the experience and you're learning from it. Did I like that? Did it match my values? 
Can I see myself doing this in the future? What would my next step be? And then that takes us all the way back around to examine. Okay, I'm back to examining myself. What do I want to do next? What's that? Okay, I'm going to explore again, and then I'm going to take another experience. So you go on this cycle. And over, you know, the beginning, your cycle might be quite rapid, but over time, it might start slowing down a bit, but you still go through it. You still go through it. You still should constantly examine, explore, experience. Um, hopefully that makes sense. It does make sense. Thank you so much for, for explaining. And I can see that we have some people working with careers here today or career counselors. So I just wanted to ask, like, how can they... And also we have students here, um, like how can the different people implement this in, in their career design or helping others career design? What do you think? I, think, I think from a personal level, it's just, mm -hmm. you know, even just keeping it in the back of your mind, Yeah. you know, making sure that you're going through the process of, you know, what do I want to do? What do I want to achieve? What's important to me? Mm -hmm. You know, the exploration stage, you should build into your life. Yeah. You know, you should be an explorer all the time, opening opportunities, knocking on doors, you know, just because you're in one career doesn't mean you can't talk to people yeah. and look for other opportunities. Mm -hmm. And even if you're in a full time job, you can still experience by taking a class, you know, joining a, a meetup group, you know, so I think you can just build it in very easily. And if you looked at the framework, it would make a lot of sense. I think for maybe for, for career advisors that are working with slightly younger students, the framework can be far more kind of structured. Okay, yeah. this is how you can examine. We offer these resources. You know, when we're going through the examine piece, here are questions you need to ask. Here's a mind map that you need to create. Here are the steps that you need to go through. Exploration stage. Okay, go find 10 organizations that you feel match some of your hobbies or your interests or allow you to, to, to kind of achieve what you want to do in, in your career. Um, and, you know, again, there's certain structures that they can go through. And in the experience side, it can be really difficult for, especially at schools, career counsellors, to find those experiences. Mm. It can be really hard because you're spending so much time with the examine part and understanding the student, and then you're helping them explore. And they're like, I want to go and do that. And I want to, how do I do that? So, okay, here we go. So I think, you know, working with third party organizations doesn't have to be us, but there's lots of people that can offer that. And I think also engaging with the wider kind of local business community for career advisors is, is useful. Find the local co-work space that can offer maybe experiences. Find the local meetup groups, again, that can, can offer opportunities for students to gain some relevant, you know, work experience or even to shadow or to, or to have events like this where you can have someone talk at your local school, but make them relevant, make them current, make sure that they're those kind of future proofed industries that, that, that you're working with and you're talking to. Um, but as I said, it's not, it's not just us. There's great organizations out there doing, doing other similar things to gain that experience. But it's also making sure that the students are, are really reflecting on what experiences they have from gaming to the hobbies they have, to maybe trips they've taken overseas and, and building that into their portfolio of transferable skills. Great, thank you so much. And uh, you've given us so many career advice uh, just throughout this talk, but I had a final question, which, which is like, not related to the EX3 framework, but like, um, aside from that, like what are your top three tips from find or to find a fulfilling career okay number one number one get yourself a board and when i'm talking about a board you know in in business the one thing i do is i surround myself with different people you know with different expertise and different ideas because the worst thing in the world is if I launch a business and it's just me, it's going to be for me, I'm going to be blinkered, and I'm not going to get that, that kind of outside perspective. And I don't see enough people do this with their careers. You know, you want, and I, I think, was it they call it in Japanese, it's called a, a moai. And your moai is six or seven individuals that support you emotionally, financially, and, you know, you, you have that support network forever. You know, any, any problems that you have, um, you will go to them and they will support you and they'll give you advice and they will all be slightly different. So you get different viewpoints. You need your own moai in your career design. You know, maybe get, a, you, know, you know, family members, fine. You can have one of your family members, but obviously if you're using a parent, they, they've maybe got, you're going to be a doctor, son. That's what you're going to do. You're going to be financially secure and that's fine, but you need to kind of tame that a little bit with maybe a, a professor that you've met that you respect. But then in the industries, that you, you may be interested in, reach out to someone, find a mentor. And the one thing, again, that we very much encourage people to do is 
to be proactive and asking for help. You'd be surprised if you ask for help, they, they, they will give it to you. Charlotte, I'm going to use you as an example. The, the interview that you had last week, hopefully you've connected, thumbs up if you've connected, could be a great mentor, you know, and he was willing because he's been in the same place that you're in and it can help you go on that journey. So I think it's about finding that moai, that board, but making sure they're diverse, different ages, different backgrounds, different mindsets, and talk to them. Talk to them about your career steps. Let them be part of your journey. And you can, you know, hopefully you'll become someone else's board, moai, and support them. And I think there's one thing that we don't do enough. We don't speak about our careers enough because we don't think people are interested. We don't want to bore them. But the fact is, we spend, again, the majority of our life in our careers. We should be talking about this. And if you're in a job that you enjoy, that matches your values, you probably want to speak about it. You want to talk to people about it. And because you're passionate about it, they'll want to listen if they're any sort of decent friend. So I think, you know, find that board and be comfortable about talking to careers and getting that input from other people. Um, That's number one. Number two, open your eyes. This is it's that, it's that kind of thing of looking and actually seeing things and recognizing it. You know, too often we're, we're kind of stuck with our phones and we see so much that you don't actually see anything. You, you don't appreciate what it is. So I think, you know, when, you, when you're watching TV and you see, I don't know, Suits, was that about lawyers or something? I don't know. And, and that's an interest. Have a, have a deeper look into it. Maybe it interests you. Find out what it's about. You know, if you meet someone on the street and they're a, I don't know, they're a, they're a performer, a street performer, find out what it means to be a street performer. You know, really understand, you know, what it means to have that job, you know. And I think it's, it's a simple thing to do, but not a lot of people really do it. I think everyone can be quite blinkered. They go to work, they do their job, they watch Netflix, they don't take anything in, they don't really see anything. Um, and I think, you know, sometimes that's where we come at next and we're able to help people open their eyes and see what's around them, what they enjoy. Um, and the third thing I think is, is take the positives from the negatives. You know, I've had some damn awful jobs, some damn awful jobs, but I have always done them with a smile on my face because I know by the end of that job, I don't want to do it anymore. I've ticked it off. That's a terrible job. Unloading frozen lamb carcasses off of a frozen lorry into a frozen warehouse. It's not great, but I still did it with a smile, you know, and I think also I was able to to, to really appreciate that I was able to do different things. Some people there, that was what they would do. They they had the commitments and they had to do that. And that's a real shame because I, I don't think anyone particularly enjoys unloading frozen lambs off of frozen lorries into frozen warehouses. Um, but take the positives from every situation. Everything is a learning experience. So do the jobs. And if you don't enjoy them, do them for a while. Give them a good crack of the whip. Don't let anyone down. You know, again, too often people are like, that don't like that job. I'm just not going to turn up. Be respectful. You know, use that experience to grow as an individual, to grow as a person, because it's always the bad experiences, like being dumped in New Zealand, that are the best conversations at the dinner table. That's the ones people, we love hearing about people's, you know, mishaps and misfortunes. So think about all the enjoyment someone else is going to have from your bad experience. So I think get your moai, open your eyes and take the, take the, the, the positives from the negatives and explore as many opportunities as you can. Thank you so much. Those are some great advice. And that was my last question. Actually, um, we have some time left for Q&A for everybody who's in the call. If you want to stay on and ask Neil some questions, you're more than welcome to do so. Um, I just wanted to thank you all for joining. If you have to go and uh, just make sure we actually have um, a newsletter that if you want to like stay on top of what we're doing and what's happening with next gen, uh, you can subscribe through, um, through this link. Uh, one second. I need to change my... There we go. Um, so you can just subscribe. And for those of you watching, you can find the link down in the in the description of the video. Um, so yeah, I'm going to pause the recording now. And, and thank you all for, for watching. And thank you all for joining. And we will see you in the next expert talk.